Hello ladies and gentle ladies, welcome back to another video on this channel and this video is going to be very different and I've tried to make this video quite a few times but it has failed every time so far so we're going to try again. Um, effectively it's just what the title says, we're just going to be doing a very basic channel update since I haven't really posted any videos in a while and I'm basically just going to show you what I've been doing pretty much, that's all I want to show you. So I'm just going to go through a few basic like projects that I've been working on and maybe some of them um, will show you why I haven't been doing tutorials. Although I do plan to get back to tutorials soon and we'll talk about that more a little bit later. So the first thing I want to show you is this right here. So this is currently um, one of the bigger mods that I am working on and effectively it is a dynamic fluid tank mod at least that's what i like to call it and effectively it's uh you create fluid tanks with a big multi-block so if you have seen um i believe my latest stream it might not be my latest stream as of when i upload this um, but one of my previous streams uh i was working on this mod so you can see that if i for example place down the controller the structure will complete and it will start filling up with water that's because it is getting pumped in into these valves right here just using the mechanism things here and you'll see that fills up the whole multi-block like this and you can see the water is going in there and that obviously works with any fluid so yeah this is one of the things i am working on um, i haven't touched it in a few days and i'll show you kind of what i've been doing in the past few days soon um, but we're going to start with this because this is definitely one of the bigger projects that I've been doing. And one of the main reasons I've been doing this, and, you know, mostly it is just for fun. But also, it's actually going to be very useful to you guys because I'm going to be starting a multi-block series very, very soon. And so this is kind of helping me just get back into the rhythm of multi-blocks and how those all work and once again we'll talk about that a little bit more later but yeah just note that this is the kind of thing that i would like to cover when we do that multi-block series um, something on this scale would be very neat um, but this can be any size so i also do have one down here which is just a much smaller one if i take away that controller um, and that just has uh, liquid uranium hexafluoride, I believe. Yes. So once again, just using the mechanism thing, you see that fills up uh, based on, you know, how much is in there. So that is a thing I would definitely like to cover in the multi-block series. And so I'm finding it useful to just try and do that myself first and then kind of move on from there. And I'll try and do more multi-block stuff as well. Um, so that's one of the projects I've been working on. I don't really have much more to show you. I know it doesn't look like much, but it is quite a lot, actually. Um, and yeah, so we'll move on from there. One of the other things I have been working on, so we can actually go ahead and close that one. So this is Super Turty Bot, is what I've got it called, but that's not actually what it's called. Um, this is Turty Bot. So if you are in my Discord server, you would already know about the existence of this bot since it basically does everything. And the idea is obviously that it could be used in any server, but currently it's only in my server and then also uh, a few friends servers as well. But eventually I do plan on making this bot public. I don't know how much I've talked about this on YouTube before. Um, as I say, I've tried to make videos like this many times and I've just never done it. So hopefully this manages to be the exception. But yeah, I've been working on this bot for four years-ish. This version specifically has only been the past maybe year and a half, maybe two years-ish. Um, so this is in Java. As you can see, I'm just using JDA. And yeah, I mean, I've got basically everything in here that you could ever imagine um the most recent things i've been working on has been the economy system so it's just a very basic economy system you can work you can um do some gambling um you can do crime you know these kind of things and i i intend to expand this a bit to have 
as you can see here, properties, um, and then also like loans. And I would like to integrate this a bit more with like a shop. So I think I started a shop too. Um, this is all kind of a work in progress system here, but that's definitely something um, I have been working on a little bit. Um, and then also I've been working on the mini games quite a lot to try and make the bot a bit more fun. So for example, I did the hangman command. So it's just a game of hangman. In fact, I can probably show you some of this. So if I do slash hangman, you see it creates a game of hangman. Okay, it tells me, you know, this. It's just hangman, right? There's there's nothing uh, more to it. So I'll say A. A was not in the word. We'll go E. Nope, we'll go O. Okay, we'll go I. And you see that will start to obviously construct the thing. So I is in the word. That's great. U. So U is in the word. Um, what am I missing? There must be another con uh, another vowel, right? Shortly. Um, maybe just Y, though. I know that's obviously not a vowel, but... Okay, that was not correct. We can try just some consonants then. If hope that we get lucky. Uh, so we'll go L. And then we'll go D. And then we'll go N. And presumably G. So the word was building. Wow. Um, we also have tic-tac-toe. Or if you are from the UK, like me, then it is noughts and crosses. Um, you can play against an opponent, of course. Um, but I'll just play against the bot just to show you it a bit quicker. So we get a board. I will just go um, there. You see the bot goes there. So I'm going to go in the middle. And yeah, obviously this bot isn't actually like trying. It's just guessing randomly. Um, but then I can just go there and boom, I won the game. That was fairly simple. Another thing I've been working on was Connect 4. And once again, you can play this against an opponent if you want. Um, so, you know, I'll just go 1, go 1, 1. And obviously, once again, the bot is not trying, even though it is about to win if I were to mess this up, of course. Um, yeah, I can just put myself there and boom, I won the game. And then is there another one that I've been working on? Let me check. Yes, there is. So I was also working on checkers. So if you haven't played checkers, it's basically like um, chess, but a lot easier than, than chess. Um, here we go. And I'm actually not going to play out this whole game because it would take quite a while. Um, but I'll just show you the kind of very basics of what I've got going on here. So I will select F2, for example. And you'll see it highlights the possible locations. So I could just say E1. And that will move F2 to E1. And the bot will move uh, C3 to D2. So I can then say E1. I can move it to D2. And I'll see that will overtake or it will kill D2. And the bot actually tried to take me out. Um, once again, this is just <laughs> the bot is choosing randomly. So coincidentally, co blah, blah, blah. So coincidentally, it did actually um, take me out. Uh, let's try and move F4 to, um, we'll move that to E3. And hopefully the bot doesn't try to move that piece. It does not. So we'll go E3 and then we'll move that to D2. It's highly unlikely that the bot would also move, do that. Yeah. So, you know, D2, we can move that to C3 and etc. etc. You get the point. Um, once again, I'm not going to play that whole entire game because that would take a while. Um, I give, believe there is actually a way to give up. Or, yeah, so you can do that. Um, that's not really an ideal solution, of course, for like how you would give up, but it works um and then also i was working on see if i can find the other one we also have a wordle i actually did this one a while ago so this will actually show the daily wordle um there is a global daily wordle and then there is a server daily wordle so this one will be the server one since i'm inside a server and you'll see that no one else can see this so it's just me and the bot and I can just guess the word. 
um i'm terrible at wordle like absolutely awful um let's try like trick um this isn't perfect in terms of like how it highlights them um it's something i would definitely like to make better uh let's go like start so that means the t is either there or there yeah i can't be bothered to do this whole entire uh word or game but you can also do that in dms as well and then i've also done word search as well so you can run a game of word search and we'll see if it actually succeeds it did not um, it does fail sometimes to do a word search since it has to you know start off correctly um I'd like to fix that, but it's very hard to do, and I don't really know how to do it. So, eventually, we should be able to get a game. Actually, very unlucky today. Normally, it isn't this hard. Normally, it does work, yeah, first or, or second try, but here we go. Um, okay, this is going to be not easy to do. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I do see a word. Um pantyhose. That's an interesting word. Um we have a direct probably directed. Yep. Um Mal I see Malawi, but I assume that is Mal I assume that is not an actual word. It actually is a word. That's interesting. Um, I wouldn't really consider that a word personally, but I, I mean, I guess, I guess it is. Um, and yeah, you you kind of get the point. Once again, I'm not going to do that whole entire thing. And then also the final one. Uh, the final one I actually haven't finished. Um, this is the one I've been working on most recently, and that is a crossword. You see it will create a game, hopefully. I might have actually broken it since. It never really worked anyways. I can actually show you here. So this is kind of the most recent thing that I got. Um, so it, like, kind of works, but it's not great. If anyone knows how to generate a crossword programmatically, um, you know, please let me know, because I can't really figure out a good solution um to do that and actually you can see here um i'm been doing guest combined flags i've never shown you this before either but i can show you this real quick um i have made it a little bit better since so you just choose the options for it i like to go with 16 because um it's just a bit more fun um i'm actually going to be a bit rusty because i haven't done this in a while uh there we go so saudi arabia basically it'll just remove the ones that you guess so i can see barbados i can see iran uh, there is kiribati and that is probably laos yep um there is lebanon um that's either mauritius or mauritania i always get those two incorrect so i'm gonna wait um and i'll try to do the other ones first so i can see solomon islands um i can see is that cuba yeah now is that el salvador or yes it is so it's either el salvador or nicaragua I've got egypt and then things get nice and simple once we only have a few left namibia um madagascar let's just go for mauritius but that might be wrong it might be mauritania it, oh okay they were actually both in here that's always nice we have sierra leone and i assume the last one is going to be somalia and you can also do uh, guess the border so i was also working on this one as well so effectively the the only thing i've changed really is that like for this one instead of saying none of these really have a good example actually but but basically for example um if the united kingdom was on there i could have put uk instead of united kingdom it's basic stuff um south korea i believe yes and yeah you get the point so that's kind of 
those I've been working on. And if we just look at commits, you can see what I have been recently working on. Um, ah, yes. Yeah, so um, one of the things I have also done very recently, as you can see, is I made it so that the slash latest command will allow you to select a specific Minecraft version that you want to get the parchment version for. So nothing too crazy there. You can see that I can do slash latest parchment and I can actually choose the specific version I want. So for example, 1.20.1. And it gets me the latest for that. And if I don't select a version, then it obviously just does the actual latest, which is 1.20.4, which is always nice and handy. So that's pretty much everything I've been working on with that. The next thing we can talk about is creamed blocks, which is a wild name. I know I've already had many people tell me that. Um, that was partially intentional, but also not really effectively the idea is that you can magma cream blocks and it stops snow from being able to set on those blocks so it's very simple and i've just done this in both forge and fabric because i've been trying to learn fabric a little bit more um, it's a very simple mod really um, and it's on curse forge and it's also on modrimp so if you want to check those out obviously uh, the links will be in the description down below um, i don't really have much to say about it other than that um yeah I've, I've basically just been using this um to first of all actually release a mod because i'm terrible at releasing mods um, but also because i wanted uh, a good opportunity to try and learn fabric a bit better so that's basically how i'm doing that um, and likewise we also have copper boats which is another one i have been working on and actually i'll run the game for this one because it's a little harder to explain uh, effectively you can surround a boat with copper and it will turn it into a copper boat which makes it go a bit faster um, because i guess the idea is that there's less drag if it's covered if the hull is covered in copper so yeah and then obviously those can be oxidized which would slow it down again that's effectively the idea of this i've just brought up the forge version here because it's a little bit um more up to date i believe than the fabric version oh i did run data not run client oopsie doops we can just run client and um i'll just see you once the game loads all right so here we are in the game now if i go ahead and go to the creative tab you see there's a bunch of different ones because obviously it has to be for each type and each oxidation level and then also each wax level so you get some very very long names um, i think the longest is the waxed weathered copper plated dark oak chest boat <laughs> so you can see that's a very long name that you have there and yeah you just place it down it's just a normal boat um, but it goes a bit faster so this is obviously um, weathered so it's not the fastest one but if we grab a copper plated nope we can't do that okay that's fine um, we'll just grab a copper plated oak boat and you see that's actually a lot faster than a normal boat um, yeah you can wax it you can then strip it afterwards if you want whatever those kind of things kind of what i've been holding off on on actually releasing this is i want to try and get it working with lightning um sometimes the lightning just destroys the boat and i'm not really sure why so that's kind of what i'm still working on with this this looks like this has been hit by a meteor anyways <laughs> i always get distracted like that um yeah that's this i mean i, I don't really have anything else to say about it it's a work in progress hopefully i'll release that soon uh, by the time this video is out i might have released that mod so it might be linked in the description of this video as well okay the next thing we can talk about is something that i once again don't know if i have talked about thus far um and that is something called brass now brass is a mod loader that i and my community have been working on uh in the discord well <laughs> okay it's, it's actually in, it's it's a lot more complicated than that so we started this out as a joke and i believe it was around when quilt released 
No, no, it wasn't around when Quilt released. It was when Silica released. Um, if you don't know what Silica is, I think it's basically a mod loader that wanted to be server side. So it was kind of like plugins, but it was actually mods. It was a bit weird. I don't really know what's happened to it. I haven't heard anything about it since, but there were so many new loaders um, being announced. That I was like, you know, fuck it. I'm just going to make my own. And I did. Um, we actually made brass and I can't bring up brass because I don't have it um, on this PC, but it worked. It actually worked well. Um, we actually even started working on the API for it too. But I have decided to scrap brass or like the, the actual project of brass. So um, we had brass, we had, we had the brass loader, we had the brass API and we also had Bradle. And um, I actually had someone known as Matty Robert working on that with me. He actually did most of the work on Bradle. Um, he is now one of the developers of Neoforge, by the way. Um, not to brag or anything, but, you know, just saying. And, um, yeah, I've decided to scrap that because he did all the work, right? Which is fine, um, but it just meant that I couldn't do any of it because I had no idea what he wrote. So what I've decided to do is do it completely from scratch because the other thing about what Brass was um, originally was that it was built on something called MML, um, which is Minecraft Mod Loader or Launcher. I think it's Launcher, actually. And effectively, that does a lot of these steps for you. So I've decided to create it completely from scratch, completely by myself. And I've actually got quite far. Um, I can actually run the game even, um, but I haven't really got much further than that. So I'll just show you a very basic task that I could do. So we will go to, where are they? I'm blind, I cannot read. Here we go. So I've just opened the actual mod loader here. So I have to open the mod loader plugin to be able to work um, on the project, uh, on the um, Gradle plugin, um, because just of some complications currently with how it's set up. Um, that's obviously not how it would work eventually. Um, the idea, I think, is that I'm going to probably have them separated so you don't actually have to have the API and the loader together. I believe that's going to be the idea, but we'll see. I'm not sure right now. Um, so all it can do right now basically is decompile. Um, it can also deobfuscate. It, it, it can do a class deobfuscation, not a uh, method or anything else. Um, so it can apply some basic mappings. So for example, uh, you've got the mapping thing here. I kind of want to rewrite all of this because it's not great. You see I am decompiling here. So I'm using Vineflower to decompile it. But obviously any decompiler theoretically could work. And I'll just show you a very basic task. So I will show you the run client task. So I'm going to go run client and you see it will start by downloading the assets. So it downloads the piston meta. Then it's going to download all of the assets. So you'll see here um, it's actually it does actually have to download them. Um, but sometimes you will see that it can copy them if I already have that asset. Um, it looks like somehow I don't already have these. But yeah, some of them here, you can see this one has been copied because it's able to look up the hash. So that will just take a moment. And then once it has done the asset downloading, it will go ahead and download the client. So the actual client jar that will allow us to run the game. But here you go, download client. Oh, oh yes, also the library. So uh, once again, most of those, it's just able to copy them. Oh, and then it runs, so it, it doesn't remap it, this one. Um, but I do have remapping tasks and uh, other things in here as well. So obviously we get the classic exception there. And boom, you know, we have a, a Minecraft game. Um, that's basically, yeah, what I've got. And I've, I can also decompile, but I'm not going to show you that because it takes a while. So yeah, that is one thing I have been working on. Um, I haven't actually worked on it recently. I've gotten a little bit stuck with it. Um, but I will probably come back to it after um, I'm done with my uni work since um, this isn't unfortunately something I can prioritize over that. But I think we can move on from there. Um, I do plan to make like a, a proper video about this 
um, at some point if I actually get it in a good state. Now the final thing that I have been working on is Railroad and the OG fans, or I say OG, not really OG, um, really like uh, uh, four years ago, maybe. Um, the people that were in my Discord, the old Discord, by the way, not the current Discord server, the old one, the one that I deleted, uh, you may, may remember a project called Railroad. And the idea was that this is a modding IDE. So an IDE that is specific to Minecraft modding. That is the plan of this. And it worked, actually. It came across what quite well. And I can once again show you this. So I'll just go to GitHub. So here we go. Here is the Railroad Team GitHub. You see that we have modding IDE here, which was the original, original one. And you can actually see a lot of people did help to work on this um, when I kind of initially announced it. We had lots of people helping out. Um, which was great and we had like meetings and stuff it was really cool actually we got quite far you can see um people even started working on like translations and you know class for doing fabric mods so you can see here you got like a whole fabric mod creation um we had a few issues that we had as well so some cool stuff there some discord rpc stuff um and yeah just a few other things as well which was really cool um and it was actually coming along super well until we kind of hit a bump in the road where things got a bit messy um in terms of like the actual code it got quite messy so this by the way is going to be built using java fx um, because that's just more modern than swing it, it's faster than swing it's just better than swing so that's what we're using we have considered other languages as well so we have considered um what's it called um react native we have considered that like using electron and stuff um but it's just easier to do in java especially because Minecraft itself is obviously Java, so we can have much closer integration. Um, we can like directly class load things if we needed to, um, and that would just work. So that's kind of the plan. And also with Java FX, we can also make it so you can easily style things if you wanted to. I know you could do that with Electron as well, but it's not quite the same. Um, and this came along quite well, um, but we decided to remake it from scratch. So we have Railroad Old here, which was just called Railroad. I recently renamed it, um, which once again, we had quite a few people work on. As you can see, there's a few contributors here. Um, just did some basic stuff in here. And we did have um, a couple pull requests too. A lot of these obviously um, are just Dependabot, but not all of them should be Dependabot. Yeah, so we had a few things here. Um, we got into like recipe gen and stuff. And yeah, that was all going pretty well. So you can see there's, there's actually quite a lot going on here. Um, but unfortunately, it got quite stale after some time. Um, which makes sense. I mean, um, it kind of got to a point where we needed to have a project creation system. And we didn't have that. We kind of got started with the editor first and the project explorer and all those kind of things but we didn't have a project creation system um, so i tried to start a new branch i decided okay i'll make a project branch and i will try and integrate that by myself the problem is um yeah that kind of caused it to get stale because no one else could work on anything right um, because if they did it would conflict with the project system and that kind of killed the whole entire project um i'm actually going to unstar this because i don't want this to be uh, a starred thing and uh yeah so yeah that kind of killed the whole thing which was a bit of a shame but it was my fault really because we shouldn't have started other things without starting the the project system so that's where the new railroad comes in and i have started this um i think i started it about two weeks ago yeah as you can see two weeks ago and i've already got quite far with it so i've been working on this completely by myself my plan is to try and get to the actual ide stage without anyone else 
and then when I'm at a stage where I think it's extensible so people can start you know branching off and doing other things um, that is at a point where I will kind of make a community call to like you guys and to my discord and I'll try and make a proper like announcement for it um, but effectively I can show you what I've got so far, and I'm actually quite proud of this. Um, it may not look like much. Uh, it, it's not going to look like much, um, but this is this is quite a lot of work that has gone into this. Um, pretty much non-stop for the past two weeks, I've been working on this. So, and I I've actually started with the project system. Oh, this isn't the right one. This is the wrong one. This is the old one. Okay, well here's the old one. Anyways, uh, the the project branch that I created. So you would create a project like this. You choose a mod. Uh, you choose forge. And then you select your mod name, so you know, test blah blah blah. You could do those, um, right? Because I have to fill these out, which yeah, it, it is a bit messy. Um, we'll just do that, it doesn't really matter. You know, you select your Minecraft version, whatever, whatever, whatever. Boom, you move on, you select your location, you start, and it, it creates the project. Um, this is the old one though. All right, so here we are inside of the new project and we'll run this. So we've got our kind of main home screen here. And as you may see, if you've used IntelliJ a lot, this is quite similar to IntelliJ because I'm kind of creating the very basics um, using kind of what IntelliJ looks like. So, you know, I've got a basic settings pane here, uh, all your settings and whatever. There's obviously no settings in here. Uh, just done a very basic like github connection thing here um, that'll be used for later I'm not too worried about it and you've got all of my different projects here so you know i would obviously open a project like that um, and i can filter them by date or by name or you know by nothing um, i can import projects i can open projects but for now i've been working on the new project and this sidebar is a little bit messed up at the moment so don't worry about that um, so I've got Forge, Fabric, Neoforge, and Quilt. Eventually, obviously, if I were to work on Brass more, then Brass would be in here too. Maybe like architecture maybe even plugins is like a, a future cool thing that would be nice. But yeah, so we'll start with Forge because I haven't actually done any of the other ones. You see they're just blank. Um, so I've just been doing Forge for now. But you see that I can type in test mod. And you see that's actually auto-filled a lot of the different things here. Um, we've got the Minecraft version, so we'll just go to 1.20.1. And you see the this is the latest one, so it's, that's why it's got a half star. But if we scroll down a bit, you'll see this is the recommended one. We can choose to use mix-ins, we can choose to use access transformers. We can set the mappings, so we might, for example, want to use parchment instead. And once again, you've got the latest one there and then all the other versions. And then also you've got yarn as well. So you can choose yarn if you want. I believe this is actually the wrong order, but I can fix that very easily, of course. I've got parchment there. And one cool thing that I'm actually quite proud of, for example, is if I put this in my OneDrive. So I'm just going to quickly find that. So let's say I want it in my Minecraft mod OneDrive you'll see that it actually says um, it's not recommended to create projects in OneDrive as it has a tendency to cause problems. And then also, for example, if I made the mod ID like four characters, um, it will say short mod IDs are discouraged as they may conflict with other mods. So that's kind of just some cool things. I, I think they're kind of cool anyways. Um, they're just warnings, those, by the way. Um, and ignore that this is still complaining don't worry about that <laughs> that's just a silly bug um and yeah you could obviously do this so i'll do dev.30 wordy is my group id and then the version 1.0.0 uh, you can also select a license as well up here and so you can select a custom license as well and put that in there or you've got uh do whatever do, do whatever the fuck you want a uh, public license as well these are just some basic ones I, I thought would be nice to add. Um, but it defaults to MIT. Um, I should probably make it default to um, LG, uh, LGPL3. And then you can create. And then that would obviously create the product. It doesn't actually do anything right now. And that's kind of where I've got. So it may not look like much, but it is actually quite a lot. And um, the other thing I was working on with this is the layout system so 
this is going to sound a bit boring and it may sound trivial, um, but effectively it will save your IDE layout every time you actually open it. So, uh, for example, like when I open IntelliJ, you'll see that it has my um, file explorer here on the left, right? And, you know, if I were to close it and reopen it, it would open with this same layout as well with the same ones open and you know i've got um nothing here and then i have the run window down here at the bottom and you know all those kind of things so that's something that i would want to save so that's why i made a parser that allows me to do that i don't think i actually okay apparently i removed the comment that shows what the layout would look like but effective well effectively what this does is it will just pass a layout i can actually show you here so basically this layout so you see that it's like it's a H split uh, and then it's got inside of that a V split, which is 75%, uh, which has a file explorer, which is 15%. And then you could add custom data like a current directory, for example. You could have a you know text editor, which is 65 and then the tabs, which is some more like custom data and then all those kind of things. And then that just basically passes it into this uh, node tree that I can, you know, then use if I wanted to when I actually create the UI. But I haven't actually got that far. I just thought I would do that because it was a bit of fun. Um, and I haven't really worked with parsing in a while. So building a parser is quite fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically what I've been working on in the past few weeks, months-ish. The only other thing I want to mention is that I do plan on streaming a little bit more soon and hopefully on Twitch as well. So I plan on multi-streaming any of like Minecraft modding stuff or coding stuff. I will multi-stream that on Twitch and on YouTube, um, but for like non-Minecraft content or non-Minecraft like modding content, um, that will be just on Twitch. So I plan to do some like Rocket League streams, maybe some like Rainbow Six Siege streams, maybe GTA streams, Fortnite, I don't know, I've, all those kind of uh cool things um i might do those exclusively on twitch and yeah i guess the final thing is um if you would like to join the discord server the link is in the description below as you can see here we have uh, almost 700 members so I, it's it's not quite close to what it was before um but it's here um <laughs> ignore that it's a little bit dead at the moment i haven't really been uh you know pushing for it to be um promoted and obviously it dies down a little bit when i uh, haven't been making tutorials so it's understandable i'm not like mad at that or anything um oh oh i almost forgot <laughs> i almost forgot industria yes because yes of course so i did want to talk about industria because i haven't really discussed the direction of it i haven't made a devlog in quite some time so <laughs> Here's the interesting thing. I have completely scrapped Industria, like what it was. I've scrapped it. Um, and I know a lot of you are not going to be surprised by that because I I do have a tendency to do that with things. Um, but really, this was for an actual good reason compared to like other times when I've scrapped things, which maybe have not been for such a good reason. Um, but this time was actually for a good reason, and that is because I wanted to plan things this time. So that's what I've actually been doing. Um, I've just been going through, basically, and planning things. So I didn't really have a goal for, like, the new version of Industria, because when I came away from that chemistry thing, I just didn't really know what to do do and i was I, I didn't want to make it too much like a typical tech mod with you know crashes and all those kind of things like you're obviously going to have those anyways but like what else right what else do you have in a tech mod i don't know if anyone has any ideas let me know and maybe i'll consider going back to it but like i just didn't have any ideas for what to actually add to a tech mod so i decided i'm going to go back to the chemistry route um Dirty chemistry is not coming back, so don't get your hopes up about that. Um, but Industria is coming back, and this time Industria will have a theme of tech chem, is what I call it. So it's going to be a lot of tech, but mixed with chemistry. So that's the idea. 
And basically what I'm doing is I'm going through each of the elements and I'm completely mapping them out. So I'm mapping like all of their usages. I'm mapping how you get them like primitively and then how you would get them industrially and you know yeah all of their uses like a, a basic description all these kind of things and i'm doing that for every single element and then the idea is that for like any compounds or any machines or anything i can create a page for those and then map those out and then go from there but i just want to start with doing every element so if you see i come into here um, you can see this is the whole entire graph here, so of all of the elements um, and basically all of the different pages that I would have to create thus far. And does quite a lot, as you can see. Um, we will just obviously start with hydrogen. If I can see hydrogen, there you go. So you see it has a very basic description here. Um, this is just chat GPT description, um, just to, you know, if I need to know something very basic about it um, you can see i've got the primitive section here so you can primitively get it with a water metal reaction uh, with like you know etc you know sodium um, if you wanted with water theoretically gets you hydrogen iron would obviously work as well but that's a lot of longer of a reaction it's just easier to get uh, and then you obviously have an acid metal reaction which is much better than a water metal reaction uh, as long as you have the acid of course which is a little bit more complicated um, so i just got some basic ones there and then we have the industrial production section so you've got like steam methane uh, reforma reformation you've got electrolysis you've got um, partial oxidation biomass gasification uh, thermochemical water splitting and then uh, photoelectrochemical water splitting as well so those are kind of the methods that i would um, have come up with and kind of all the things that i could add to a mod now i'm not saying that i'm gonna for example do all of these things right that would be absurd but like i guess an end goal of the mod would be that i have all these things right so in a way it's a never-ending mod um but, you know, I could just do one at the start, right, just for each of the elements, and then go from there. So at least I have a base to build up to, and then I can move on to each further step from there. And then you have, like, the uses here as well. So you've got hydrogenation, um, you've got, like, it's used as a coolant, uh, deuterium, which is obviously used in, like, nuclear stuff, and then tritium as well, which is... Uh, can be used in hydrogen bombs which would be obviously like a, a cool thing that you could make with the mod maybe you could make a hydrogen bomb um, i'd love to also add like nuclear reactors to the mod that would be really cool and then you know move on from there so helium you can see it's the same kind of thing so natural gas extraction uh, and then it's used in like uh, fuel tanks and space rockets and needless to say balloons because everyone has to have a little fun um, and then you know lithium right so you go into here how you extract it from brine pools this is the whole kind of process and then how that's used so lithium batteries you've got lithium infused glass lithium lenses nuclear reactors of course use lithium and then lithium salts as well which is psychedelic so you know we could add some psychedelics as well obviously not other things but and then you know you move on to beryllium you've got boron i've done basically all of these so carbon Carbon isn't very interesting, unfortunately. Um, there isn't actually much you can do with carbon, funnily enough. I, I mean, there's other ways, but like, it's just not important in terms of carbon. Uh, you've got like fluorine. Uh, you'll see some of these I've actually gone a lot lazier um, than other ones. Um, like neon, for example, only really used in neon signs. I mean, theoretically, you could use it in... Um, there was something you could use it in. I, I think it was like welding or, or something yeah you got nitrogen and i think the most recent one i worked on was magnesium but anyways you get the idea um that's kind of my plan for industria so probably not going to be another devlog for quite a while until i've got all of these base elements done and then we'll go devlogging through that um, i have actually created a new project for it as well and basically what i've done so far in that is i've added lithium um, which just basically like uh, zooms around on the water if you put it on water, which is kind of cool.
Um, just I, I wanted something to be in there so that I can actually show that I have started something. But yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about. Um, join the Discord, links in the description. And I will see you... I, I don't know what's going to come after this. Maybe it might be... I don't know. The next thing might be a, a railroad video. Might be a brass video. Might be a stream. Pro probably a stream would probably be the next thing. Might be a modding tutorial on multi-blocks. Um, I have recorded the intro video for that already. So... I, when I get around to editing that, um, that'll be one of the things. It is just important to note, like, I'm not going to be pushing for anything to come soon, soon, because uh, I just need to finish my uni work first. So around, like, 17th of May-ish is, is what I've been telling everyone, uh, is when I plan to kick back into things a bit more um, and possibly do some community things as well. So we might have a modding competition as well so if you're still here in this point in the video first of all you're crazy i don't know why you're still here but second of all that might be coming soon possibly even with a cash prize unlike other times where i i have been poor uh, i'm still poor but <laughs> i could do a cash prize this time but yeah that's something that might come soon i will see you then i guess whenever that is i mean i mean you'll probably know by the time this video is out but i will see you then Good. Bye.